Hello! Today's screencast is a little bit different than screencasts I've done in the past. This screencast is an instructional video on how to use Adobe Photoshop to make visuals for your screencast. In this video, I will address the following points. Why do I use Adobe Photoshop? What hardware and software do I use? How do you upload a PowerPoint slide set into Adobe Photoshop? What are some various tools in Adobe Photoshop? I will be covering the paintbrush, the eyedrop tool, the zoom tool, the eraser tool, and the layering function. I will show you how to prepare each slide in Photoshop for recording in Camtasia, but first I should probably talk about why I even bother using Adobe Photoshop. It's not a cheap program, so why do I use it? I use Adobe Photoshop because it easily allows you to create visuals on your slides in your set for your screencast. It is one of the only programs that allows you to write on the slide. I also really like something called the layering function, which I will talk about later in this screencast. However, some important points about Photoshop is that Photoshop does not record your video. Camtasia does that. Photoshop cannot edit your video. Camtasia does that. Uh, Photoshop is only used for visuals. No video editing, no recording, no audio, no nothing like that. Photoshop is only used for creating the visuals that you would see in one of my screencasts. Now that you understand why I use Adobe Photoshop, I'm going to show you the various hardware and software that I use. Listed on this slide, is the various hardware and software that I use for Photoshop. The first thing on the list is a digital tablet and tablet pen. Here is what my my tablet looks like. It's made by the company Bamboo. Uh, this tablet is used for writing on the screen. You would write on the screen in this area right here. Uh, you use this tablet pen. It comes with the tablet and you just write on it right here. This is what you, this is what you would use in Photoshop to write on your screen. Uh, also right now I have PowerPoint open. You need PowerPoint to make your slide set. Uh, once you've made your slide set, you need Adobe Photoshop CS6 or Adobe, Adobe Photoshop 11, Elements 11. I will be demonstrating on Adobe Photoshop CS6. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, has a few more bells and whistles than Adobe Photoshop Elements, but you could use either one to make a successful screencast. Uh, not used for Photoshop itself, but used to record your screencast will be a microphone that you saw on my head in the video earlier, and you'll need Camtasia, which is a program that can capture your screen and capture audio and capture video from your computer as well and put them all together in the same place. Uh, so to review the three main pieces of equipment that you will need for Photoshop only is a digital tablet and a, the pen that goes with it, PowerPoint, and some version of Adobe Photoshop. I will be demonstrating on Adobe Photoshop CS6. Now that the introduction is all done, we can get down to business and I, I will next show you how to upload your PowerPoint slide set into Photoshop. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to upload a PowerPoint slide set into Photoshop. So let's pretend you already have your Muddiest Point slide set ready that you want to use for your screencast. The first thing you do is open your PowerPoint slide set in PowerPoint. I already have this done. I'm in PowerPoint right now and I'm looking at my PowerPoint slide set. So while I'm in PowerPoint, I need to go to File, then I go to Save As. Click on it. Now I get to choose the name that I'm going to save my PowerPoint as. I'm going to save it as Photoshop Tutorial PowerPoint. I'm going to call it Demo. And then I get to switch my format. This is the important part. I need to save it as a PDF in a location I can access later. So I'm going to go to Format, click, change it to PDF. So now it's Photoshop Tutorial PowerPoint Demo, and at the end it'll say .pdf. And now I choose the location somewhere easy that I'll be able to access later. So I click on the where, and I'm going to save it on my desktop. Then click Save. 
So now you have your PowerPoint saved as a PDF in a location you can get to later. You now get to open Photoshop for the first time. So I'm going to click on Adobe Photoshop CS6, which is the program I'm demonstrating on. Notice this is what the Adobe Photoshop's Elements icon will look like. So I'm going to click on the one I want, click, then it opens. And this is the screen that will pop up. There's nothing here, but you want your slide sets here. This is how you open your PDFs in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, you go to File, and then Open. You click. Now you need to find your slide set that you saved as a PDF. So notice that I'm already on my desktop, and here uh, is my Photoshop tutorial PowerPoint demo, which is what I just made previously for this purpose. So I'm going to click on it. That's my PDF that I want. I'm going to hit open. And then this screen will appear. Uh, in order to select all 14 of my slides, I am going to click on the one, on number one, and then I'm going to hit OK. Then no, my first slide appears here. I'm going to repeat this process over and over again until I get all of my slides into Photoshop. So I'll show you again. File, open, click the PDF I need, click number two this time. OK, number two's up. File, open. Number three, and so on and so forth until I get to slide 14, which was my last slide. So now all my slides are up, I need to go back to my first slide so I can begin demonstrating each of the various tools in Photoshop. So in order to change slides, I am going to click on this double arrow right here, and then I have all of the slides open and an additional example over here, but I'm going to click on number one, and now I'm at the very beginning of my of my presentation. So another way to change slides is by clicking on on the tabs up here that have them labeled. So this tab represents number two. I can click on it. This is slide number two. I can click on this one. This is goes to slide number three. Clicking on this one takes me to slide number four. And then clicking on this one takes me to slide number five, which is my next topic. And the next part of this video is going to be about teaching you how to use Photoshop. So I'm going to discuss the four main tools for screencast visuals, which are paintbrush, the eyedrop tool, the zoom tool, and the eraser, and show you something called layering and how to use layers for your visuals. But first, let's start with the basics. We will start with the paintbrush. The first of your four main tools for making screencasts is the paintbrush. The paintbrush is used for writing on your slides. Over here on the left, the paintbrush is this icon that is darkened right here. So it's this one that looks like a paintbrush. Uh, your paintbrush is used for writing on your slides. Uh, to write on your slide, you just place your your tablet pen on the tablet, and then you drag to make a line appear. You can also do this with your mouse. You can click down and then drag again to make the line appear. Up here in this upper left corner, you see a 10, and then you see a little arrow. I'm going to click on the little arrow. And this is how you change the thickness of your brush. Uh, here it says size, and here's a drag bar. So I click on this little arrow, and I can drag the arrow to the thickness that I want. And right now I'm at 41 pixels, and I can go all the way to 5,000 pixels. But So here's an example. Here's what 87 pixels would look like. It's very, very, very thick. I'm going to go back and change my thickness again go back and change it to 10, what I had it originally, and you can see the difference here. Opacity basically tells you how opaque the color is, so right now I am at 100% opacity, so you, you, 
it's not see-through or transparent at all. So to change that, I can go up here to this bar that says opacity and it says 100%. I can click on this arrow right here. It'll make a another slide bar up here. So I can click on this little arrow and drag to the percent opacity that I want. I'm going to show you what 20% looks like. Notice how faint it is, but it's still the same color. Uh, notice that if I were to draw over my text, you can see the text still. Uh, so I'm going to change it back to 100, and notice now you can't see black text through my paint. So that's just an example of opacity. Uh, the next thing you need to learn how to do is to change your color. So if you look over to the left here, there's two boxes. Uh, the one on top, so this pink box to the left, is your active color. You can click on that, and then this menu will appear. You can change your color by sliding these arrows, so these two arrows around. So if I click and drag, I can change my color. My new color appears on top in this box, so right now it's blue. And my current color, the one that I was just drawing with, is shown below, so you can compare the two. And by dragging your little bar, you can change the color to any color that you wish. I'm going to go to red. Um, if you click inside this box here, you can change how white or how much black is in the color. So if I click down here, it becomes a darker red. If I click over here, it becomes closer to white. So this is white in this corner and this is black. So and in between are different shades of red. So that is how you could change your shade of red if you're into coding. There's the code for it. Uh, yes, so I'm going to go back to my original color. So I'm just going to hit cancel and then it keeps my original color. You can change your color a different way by clicking on the box again and then heading over this way to the right to something that says swatches. So you click on the swatches tab. There's a bunch of different little colors right here and you click on them and your paintbrush, notice it will automatically change to the color that you click on. Uh, this is a faster way to change colors instead of dragging because these are very common colors that many people use. One other thing is that notice there are two colors here. Uh, the one, again, the one on top in the right left is your active and the one on bottom is your secondary color. If I click on this arrow right here, my colors switch. So now that green is the color that is active. This is how you switch between two colors very quickly. You change this green the same way you would have changed the pink before. Now it's blue. And you can click this little mini arrow and you can change very quickly between your colors like so. Our next tool is the eyedrop tool. It's a tool that helps you match and change colors faster. The next tool for making your screencast is the eyedrop tool. The eyedrop tool is used for making your brush match a color of your choice. You can make your brush match a color from your slide or change colors of your brush using the eyedrop tool. So here on my left, right here, right above your paintbrush, I'm going to click on the eyedrop tool. It looks just like an eyedropper. Uh, one of the main reasons it's used for is to match a color from your slide, so look at this blue dot down here. I'm going to click on it with my eyedrop tool. And then this menu appears. Uh, my old color is on the bottom, so my color was pink. And my new color is on the top, and it's the blue that I'm selecting. It is the exact blue I'm selecting. And if I were to drag the eyedrop tool somewhere else, it could be this light blue, or this, this stripe. But you could see how this would be used in uh, just to make your colors match. I could get black very quickly that way too. So I'm going to make my paintbrush black. Uh, you can also use the eyedrop tool for selecting swatches like I did earlier. So with your eyedrop tool selected, you can click on one of these swatches and your color automatically changed to the color that you click. So I'm going to change it to a dark purple and look my active color is now purple. The eyedrop tool is used for making changing colors a lot faster. The next main tool is your zoom tool. You might want to zoom in and out to 
better see a smaller portion of your slide or because perhaps your slide did not upload the correct size. So your zoom tool is this button right down here. You can click on it. It looks like a magnifying glass. You can zoom in on your slide by clicking on this magnifying glass up at the top with the plus arrow and then you click on your slide and then you zoom in. This may be easier for you to write on. Uh, you can zoom in again and again and again uh, every time you click on it and I can zoom out by clicking on this uh, magnifying glass with the minus sign in the middle up here. So I'm going to click zooming out, zooming out, zooming out. Just every time you click you zoom out a little more. Other zoom tool functions are actual pixels where you can see how big the image actually is. So if I'm going to click on it it's huge because it's a PDF. Um, you can make the image fit the screen, right? So this would probably be a good place to record or a good size to record at because it's big. Uh, you can fill the screen. You can do print size also just to show you the different functions of your zoom. Uh, our next tool is the eraser and the eraser will lead us into our discussion about layers too. Our final main tool is the eraser. The eraser is used for changing or editing what you've already written on the screen. So to demonstrate, I am going to go back to my paintbrush tool. So I'm going to click on my paintbrush tool and then I'm going to draw something on the screen. Okay, so what happens when I erase? Let me select my eraser tool, your eraser tool is right here. It looks like an eraser and you click on it. Now watch what happens when I erase what I just did. I'm going to click down on the screen and then drag my mouse. Notice that my background is getting erased also, which is not what I wanted. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to undo that and show you the proper way to erase. So. I'm going to go to edit, click undo eraser, so now I'm back to what I was before, then I can go edit, step backwards, and then I have that uh, paint taken away. Uh, now in order to erase without erasing your background, you're going to have to put something called a layer on top of your background. Our next topic is going to be all about this layering function, what layers are, and how I can use them to erase and to draw on the screen. On the previous slide, I mentioned something called layers. Layers are invisible sheets that can be drawn on separately and can be stacked in the order that you choose. So basically, it's kind of like tracing paper. So if you look up here in this picture, you can see that this tracing paper was placed on top of this image and you could still see the image beneath it as they were tracing. Layers are used for protecting your slides from being erased as shown in the previous slide uh, and they are also used for making text or drawings appear quickly when you're doing your recording with Camtasia. So now that you know all about layers and what they are, I'm going to show you some various functions with layers. So your layer menu is over here on your right underneath your colors. Notice we have one layer present right now and that is your background layer. So I'm going to show you how to rename a layer. So I'm going to double click on layer one, which is my background, double click on the title and I'm going to change it. So I'm going to call it slide. So now you know which layer represents your slide. Uh, to add a new layer, you can go to this little drop down menu up here. You can click on this mini arrow, it's kind of hard to see. And then you can say new layer. And then you can name this new layer. I'm going to keep it named layer one. So, okay. And here is my new layer one. It is. Uh, on top of my slide. Now to delete this layer, I'm going to right click on it and then I'm going to say delete layer, click. And then you'll get a box, delete the layer, layer one, and then yes. 
So now that new layer I made is gone. So I'm going to make another new layer and show you how to draw and erase on your layers. So another way you can add a layer is by going up to the very top here and by clicking on layer. Go down to new and then on the side click layer. And then the same little box will appear. You can name it whatever you want and then you just click OK. And then your new layer appears. Now I can show you how you would draw and erase on a layer. So here I'm going to go to my paintbrush function. I'm going to draw something on my screen. And now I'm going to go to my eraser. So clicking on my eraser. And I am going to erase what I just wrote. And this time, this time my background is not erased with it because I drew on a layer. So now that you know how to draw and erase on a single layer, I'm going to add more layers and show you how to change the order. So I'm going to go to this menu here, click, and then new layer. I'm going to just keep it named layer 2. And so now I have two layers on top of my uh, slide. So I am going to draw something on layer 2. So layer 2 is now blue. It is selected. That's my active layer and if I draw on this part of the screen now this it's going to appear on layer 2. So here I'm drawing 2 on layer 2. Now I'm going to change the order. I'm going to take my layer 2, click on my layer 2, and drag it beneath my slide. And now the 2 disappears because, again, I drew that 2 on layer 2. Now I'm going to go up to layer 1 and click on it. Now layer 1 is my active layer. So I am going to change my color. Remember, I can change my color really quickly by clicking on this little arrow. Now my brush is blue, so I'm going to draw a 1. And now I'm going to take my layer 1, so clicking on layer 1, and then dragging the bar down beneath my slide. So now neither of my 1 or my 2 appear. So my slide is on top, as you can see, and my layer 2 is on the bottom. So I can t click on layer 1 and drag it above my slide, and the 1 appears very quickly. I can take my layer 2, click on layer 2, and drag it up above my slide, and now the 2 appears also. So as you can see, this would be very useful for making something appear out of nowhere. And in my next slide, I will show you a demonstration of how you can use layers like this to make a slide for your screencast flow very quickly. When setting up your slide set to record in Camtasia, it's important that you use your layers wisely. So I'm going to show you an example of how I did that for a previous screencast. This layer's example is from my most recent screencast all about iron iron carbide phase diagram calculations. In this part of the screencast, I went through and I answered three questions and filled in a table. So how would I use layers to do this? Well, look over here. On my right, you can see I have a lot of different layers. This layer on top is called right here. I'll click on it, now it's active. This is the layer that I did all of my writing on the screen on. So all of my arrows, all of my bars, all of you know the circles, they were all done on this layer. The layer below it is called slide, and that is the actual slide that is imported. So that's my background. Um, the phases present is the first thing that I answer, so when I get to that point in the screencast, I would just drag my phases present layer above my slide layer, and look, uh, the phases present appear out of nowhere. Uh, this I do this again after I answer all the questions, so once I figure out the chemical composition of each phase, I click on this layer, and I drag it above my slide layer, and look, they these appear. Uh, same is true with the phase weight fraction of alpha. I can drag that above my slide, and then then that appears. Same with phase weight fraction of gamma. Drag that above my slide, and then that appears. And then finally, the filled in table, I can drag that above my slide, and now that appears. So now my slide is on the bottom, and all of my other things are filled in. The reason why I make this whole other right here layer is for recur recording purposes. 
let's just say I messed up and I want to re-record this entire example, what I can do is I can take my slide, move it all the way back to the beginning, and all of my work, so all of my phases present, chemical composition, the phase weight fractions, they all go away, but they're still there underneath my slide, and now it's just my right here layer. And I can delete that by itself and still have all of my other work there. This is how you use layers to make your life easier when recording. You can just, okay, so I'm gonna draw on the screen, on, lay on the right here layer, and I just finished recording my example, I wanna do it again. So I am going to right click on my right here layer, I'm going to delete the layer, and now I'm, oh, I'm starting new again. I can click on this tab here, add a new layer, name it right here, and now I'm ready to record again. So this saves you a lot of time, and you can make text appear or disappear by dragging it above or below your slide. You can order your layers in the way that you want to so that things go faster. Now that I've shown you an example, I'm going to show you how to set up each of your own slides for recording in Camtasia. You've now seen an example of how I used layers to do a previous screencast. So I'm going to show you how to set up layers for each of your slides, and how to choose the zoom, and how to choose your paintbrush color, and how to move from slide to slide so that you can prepare each slide in Photoshop for your eventual recording in Camtasia. So, at the minimum, you need at least one layer on top of your background. So here you can see I only have my background present. So I'm going to click here, click new layer, and then I'm going to call it right here, as I usually do. So now this is my active layer, and now if I were to go through, I would now be able to draw on the screen, and then click on my eraser, and then erase, without having to deal with erasing my background. Again, you can add multiple layers, so I'm going to add another one, and I'm going to draw something on it. Nah. Then I can move it below my slide by clicking and dragging, and then move it above my slide again to make it pop up when I want to. That's the basics of how that works, but I always go back to right on my right here layer. Uh, for choosing the appropriate zoom, you're Basically, you want to have your slide appear as big as possible, but without you having to scroll. So I'm going to click on my zoom tool, I'm going to fit screen, and then this is probably the best size because I can now um, see all parts of my slide without having to scroll. So like, watch happens, if I do fill screen, I have to scroll to see everything. Okay, so I'm going to go back to fit screen, and I'm going to select my paintbrush, and now I'm going to talk about choosing an appropriate paintbrush color. You need to pick something that is visible, but not too obnoxious. Um, here is one of my favorites. I really like this magenta. It's easy to see. Um, another one of my favorites, click here, is purple, that dark purple. Um, I'm going to use my eyedropper now. I really like this blue also. Just some examples, I usually avoid the yellows because they're hard to see, and I also avoid the greens and the reds because there are some colorblind people out there, and I want them to be able to see too. Um, yeah, so pick a color that you like, and that's up to you. Moving from slide to slide in Photoshop is really easy. I'm going to show you how to do it. There's this double arrow right here in the top right. I'm going to click on it, and all of my slides that are open are visible. I can go to any one I want to, go back to the beginning just by clicking on it, click on that arrow again, and I can just switch between slides quickly that way. Let's review all the topics that we learned about today. Uh, I talked about why I use Photoshop for making visuals for my screencasts. It allows me to write on the screen, and it, it lets me make a text appear very quickly. I talked about the hardware and software that I use. So I have a tablet, a pen, and Adobe Photoshop to do the visuals for the screencasts. I taught you how to upload your slides into Photoshop by saving a PowerPoint slide set as a PDF and then opening that PDF in Photoshop. I talked about all of the different tools in Photoshop, such as the paintbrush, which lets you write on the screen, the eyedrop tool, which lets you 
change color, your zoom tool, which lets you zoom in or zoom out, your eraser, which lets you erase what you've done, like that, and your layering function, which allowed me to, one, erase what I did without erasing my background, and it lets me make stuff pop up out of nowhere. I showed you an example of how I used layers in a previous screencast, and I showed you how to prepare each slide in Photoshop to record in Camtasia. And now that you have the Photoshop 101 out of the way, you're ready to view the Camtasia recording video in which I teach you how to actually record your screencast using Camtasia. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section or private message me. And thank you for watching.